How's it going? I'm Colin Keegan, the judge of the Waterford Poetry Prize, and I'm here to announce the winners today in reverse order, starting with Tord. And the Tord Prize goes to Aidan Casey, who was born in Dunleary and studied English and philosophy at UCD. Since then, he has lived and taught English in Germany, Spain, and Ireland, and authored several language learning apps. His poems had features in numerous online reviews, including Pangolin Review, Ink, Sweat and Tears, More Frog, and The New Ulster, as well as several print anthologies. Aidan's poems have won um, prizes or commendations in competitions such as the Liverpool Poetry Prize, Slipstream Poets, and the Oliver Goldsmith Festival. His poem, which is placed toward in the Watford Poetry Prize, is called The Plant. And I'm going to read that for you now, and maybe share a few thoughts about why I chose it afterwards. The Plant by Aidan Casey. The plant doesn't know it's a captive, that it has no soul or anything of its captor. It has one pot, one job, one vegetable existence, and neither introspection nor resignation to muster a soy or raise an eyebrow. If uncle drops ash or the cat pisses on it, it keeps its mouth shut and has no opinion. It thrives, does not vote, and pays no taxes. In the grand scheme of things, it neither clings to faded glories, nor is waiting for something to happen. Outdoors, on a sill or a porch, rain is water off a duck's back to it. Its motto is that of the European Commission. Discretion is the better part of valour, and bliss is a little pile of dung on a trail. Indoors, people talk to it, thinking it understands love, but it could just as well be on Bear Island as in Coventry. It doesn't even know if Pete Moss was in the Libertines, or if it is both sexes, or either, like Castor Semania. A stranger to hypocrisy, it feigns ignorance of foreign conversations, vagaries of the stock market and the red carpet, whether justice was served, a sock went missing, or the stepdaughters of the house walk round naked. Not understanding, much less judging, untroubled by jealousy or the desire for revenge, when the morality priest comes, it has seen nothing, one pot, one job, one vegetable existence. It is not a fault for what is on television. Gaza pulverised, her children slaughtered, under rubble of hospitals and skills, by never enough bombs to bust all the dust up. It has seen nothing and done nothing, and nothing is enough. Nothing is ever enough. Great poem, seven pure quintets, um, almost beginning with this Orwellian rhythm, insisting on its own ignorance, that kind of political mantra, one pot, one job, one vegetable existence. Um, and it holds inside of that kind of cliche, water off a duck's back, which, you know, they say, if you see a cliche, take it out back and don't let it back in, but um, I think that cliche can be forgiven. It's given new life by its context. Um, and the whole poem is infused with this bitter humour, with deep anger at its root. Um, and the, 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 the way the plant holds this deliberate refusal to know uncomfortable truths and the way the poem accuses the reader in a way. Um, and the, the, the kind of the way different images are deployed in the poem, um, that lovely sequence in the third last stanza, um, it feigns ignorance of foreign conversations, vagaries of the stock market and the red carpet, whether justice was served or a sock went missing. And to put something so trivial beside such a large scale of justice is the kind of the core of or the, the foundation of all of that bitterness, the injustice of thinking when I don't want to think about anything, then nothing matters. Um, and that kind of almost leaving really double negative, the confusing run of nothings at the end, it has seen nothing and done nothing, and nothing is enough, nothing is ever enough. Um, the kind of relentless drive of invasion and how underneath all of that there's a really dark need that can never be satisfied. Um, seeing nothing and doing nothing, no experience gained, no feelings felt, no learning, no growth. And the irony of it all being about a plant in its little pot, doing nothing. So yeah, congratulations Ed on winning tour prize. And second place in the Waterford Poetry Prize goes to Ellen Higgins from Dublin, 
Her work has appeared in Icarus Magazine, Crossways Literary Magazine, Lucky Jefferson over in the US and Kissing Dynamite in the States as well. She co-edited the Piranha Trinity College's Dublin's satirical newspaper. She graduated with a degree in European Studies in 2022 and speaks fluent Italian. Her poem is I Want To. I want to reach across to find you on the other side of a bed that isn't ours. Take the love poems that I gave you before you read them and do not think of me and hold on to these hard and shining things. He chooses nicer wine than I do. I'm smarter than him. We do not love each other. We have single beds. So this is a killer poem to me. Uh, the poems this year kind of reach across and grab the reader in a way. You know, they say the shortest distance between two people is a smile. I love that phrase, um, but a poem can be a bridge between two people, or like that reach across to kind of grab you and pull you into someone else's life. Um, and uh, the fourth thing, there's an audacious kind of line break and a big gap right at the start, which emphasizes that line I want to reach across, and the desperation in the back of that word, uh, reach, and then this huge gap, which builds tension and kind of, um, what would you say, accentuates that expression of desire, I want to, to find you on the other side of the bed that isn't ours. That gap is almost like a gasp, you know? Um, and then in the second line, we're flipped into the past tense, the poem starts to play tricks on us. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines, and uh, there's a lovely lyrical lie start which kind of shift, shifts and flips into something more brutal. The light and lyrical shift from fantasy sort of into the truth, from feminine to masculine. Um, and you couldn't get further than the warm comfort of a bed with that hard and shining idea. It's not an image, it's kept vague, hard and shining things. So we're cast into this multiple of what's hard, what's shining. He chooses nicer wine than I do, this third figure. We've got the subject of the poem, we've got the speaker, and we've got this he, and he chooses nicer wine than I do. I am smarter than him. This sort of shift into the submission, the sacrifice, the loss of something else into this thing. We do not love each other. And that last line, we have single beds. The shrinking lines, the damning insistence of we don't um, love each other. And that lovely kind of, almost like Beck equality of like, these overlapping relationships, the course of this, these three figures, um, yeah. And then that lovely kind of sneaky uh, status marker of wine, the fact that it's in there at all, that these people have this sophistication to them, but then it's all kind of corrupted because everyone's trapped in this lie. So yeah, that's what I want to. And congrats again to Ellen. And the first place on the Waterford Poetry Prize 2024 is awarded to Ellen Connolly, who is an American writer living in Dublin. Their poetry can be found in Oxford Poetry, Poetry Ireland Review, Lucky Jefferson and Had. Their debut collection, Dead Name, was released in 2023 by Right Bloody UK. Recently they were longlisted for the 2024 Edinburgh Short Story Award, where the recipient of a 2024 Emerging Artist Bursary from Dunleary Rat Down and won a 2024 Agility Award as well from the Arts Council of Ireland for their fiction and creative non-fiction. Ellen received an MA in Creative Writing at UCD Dublin. The winning poem of the Ward for Poetry Prize 2024 is The Transgender Mirror. The Transgender Mirror. It starts here. Bring yourself to this glass, your shaven hair, growing breasts, cracking voice. Bring the pronunciation of your name. Remove the thick cloak of explanation. Undress and redress until you shine, a sun over a sea, tits and bits bobbing in the calm. Wherever you are, you are more. Bring the laugh that is new, even to you, as it rises and falls. Here, someone is sure to laugh along with you. There is no discourse to swim through. Nothing requires more than a room and your presence there. The body of you, not an achievement. Your collaboration with it, a miracle. Nothing about the truth of you requires the whole world. There you go. So congrats to Ellen. 
and uh, yeah, I chose this poem because firstly, unlike all the poems this year, all three of them use that powerful use of you, the second person. Um, we all feel kind of pinned to the wall by the use of you, ambushed into the perspective um, you know, of somebody we didn't sign up to be, in a way. And uh, in the very specific uh, description of transitioning, um, very specific and beautiful description of transitioning, we find the universal need to be accepted. You know? um, and in the centre of it all, one powerful metaphor, which ultimately sets everything floating. You shine a sun over the sea, and everything is kind of informed by that feeling of being held safe in water, um, almost womb-like kind of feeling. And uh, it kind of like, it's like the poem has a voice that makes you feel safe. It's almost like the sea or being on a horse, that feeling of like settling the vagus nerve, the lovely kind of comforting rhythm of it, the breath, like the ebb and flow of the sea, um, beautiful use of assonance, the whole thing is very subtly and carefully put together with the lightness of like cobwebs, you know. Um, and yeah, it brings us to a place far from the anxiety of that um, fractious discourse that can happen online to the intimacy of one person saying, here boy, I here boy put you in front of the mirror. Um, yeah, and it's uh, that voice that kind of you kind of trust it because you feel like it's kind of looking out for you. The poem is full of kindness. Um, and I love this almost robotic use of the bookend of those it starts here at the start and nothing about the truth of you requires the whole world. They're both in brackets but a very subtle but particular choice of those kind of square brackets, the parentheses that almost speak about computer code as if the poem is being downloaded into us. Um, the mechanical, the sort of machinery it evokes the beginning of or the end of some machinery where the poem talks some deep truth and then returns into that world at the end. Uh, yeah, and wherever you are, you are more. Here, someone is sure to laugh along. The congratulatory tone, but like, well done for being you. You know, we all need to hear that. And it reminds me of Love After Love, the great Derek Walcott poem. Um, probably one of the most loving poems I've read in a long time full of generosity um, and full of, I suppose, um, that beautiful kind of connection that can happen, the intimate moment between the reader feeling like they're the only person being spoken to and the poet. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's a, probably a really bad image, but the idea of a care bear who just kind of does that and the lovely kind of light shines out. Um, there's a beautiful brightness to this poem. So congratulations again to Owen and to all the poets, to Aidan and Ellen as well. And to say thanks to Margaret and all at Waterford Arts Office. Um, congrats, huge congrats to the winners. And thanks to everyone uh, who entered. And if you are feeling a little bit dissatisfied, just remember that competition was really, uh, like there was a, I think in the past four years, like the entrance, the amount of entrance have uh, doubled since uh, I started to judge the competition and uh, it always feels like this huge, almost like an arrogant feeling of being like having the privilege to choose winners but the amount of people who are in contention for those final three places uh, it's an incredibly stressful and difficult decision to make to say not these are our poems but there's always like there was a huge list of contenders this year and um, for those uh, coveted final places so yeah, congrats again to the winners and thanks very much.